study. Glad to have some time with you this morning. You know, I, I sometimes struggle with how we as the church need to respond to the culture at large here in North America. It's a troublesome thing in a lot of ways because we don't quite know what to do with this. We see the church declining, and everybody's offering really quick and easy answers. Um, from those who are saying we're not being true to the Word of God and we're, we're not reading it in a plain and literal fashion, to those at the other end of the spectrum who say we're not being open and affirming enough of those who are in pain or marginalized, and at a point, I suspect, people are right at both ends of the spectrum. That may sound like a strange thing to say, but you know, we are called, as the people of God, to care for the stranger, the alien, the foreigner, the orphaned, the widowed, the marginalized. And it's true, we're also called to take God's word seriously. We're to look at scripture and interact with it in a way that well, enables us to understand God's will for us in this place. The trouble is, both answers are overly simplistic. And neither, in my mind, really gets at the heart of the problem. Here in North America, we are going through a cultural change. It's a major shift. We used to talk about it as the transition from the modern world to the postmodern world, a philosophical shift. Well, that's part of it, yes. Um, and we can blame all sorts of people for that, but it doesn't change the fact that our culture is in transition. And in some ways we see a divide that continues to grow. The splintering of our culture is evident through the, the last cycle of presidential elections and politics, but we also see it in racial issues, in generational issues, in issues around jobs and technology. So what do we do? How do we as the church respond to this culture in which we find ourselves. And in many cases, culture speaking a different language, using words differently. And we're not always quick to catch it. Is there really hope? Well, for some people, the answer is to escape. And this has always been part of the Christian story. We tend to be escapists. Now, when I say that, we've done this in a variety of ways. But what was the monastic movement? Well, in some ways, it was getting out of a culture that people felt was too corrupt, so they left the culture and went off and formed monastic communities. Now, those communities did a great deal for the church, don't get me wrong. But for some people, the world in which they lived was too much, and they had to get out. The Puritans and many religious groups fled Europe, came to what is now the United States for religious freedom so they could practice their faith as they wished to. But in many cases, they were not willing to let other people practice their faith as they wished to. Doesn't matter if we're talking about the Quakers in Philadelphia or the Puritans in New England. Both were pretty sure that they had it right and everybody else was wrong. And everybody in between had the same, the same opinion. Now, the idea of moving somewhere new and creating a utopia is a wonderful idea. But at a certain point, it's no different than the monasteries that started in the Egyptian deserts. It's escapist. When you think about our theology from the mid to late 20th century, where we talk about the rapture and God taking the church out of the world. And when we die going straight to heaven, 
part of this is also escapism. There's a mess on earth. We don't want to deal with it. We don't know how to deal with it. So the best solution is to simply get out. Well, there's no new continent to move to where we can establish a city of God the way that we want it to be. And even in our churches, sometimes we can't get along, so we stop going. Or we form a new church where people think just like we do, for a time at least, until there's another decision that ruffles feathers, and so we escape. I'd like you to think a little bit about what it means for us to really engage our culture. To lay aside our preferences so that we can really reach this next generation. If we don't change the way we are engaging culture, we will become more and more irrelevant to that culture. I'm not saying the Word of God is irrelevant to that culture. I'm saying we, as representatives of God, have ceased to function as meaningful ambassadors and need to rethink how we engage the world. Now, I have a great deal of hope that the church can do this and needs to do this, not only here at Philadelphia First, not only in the Church of the Brethren, but across the spectrum. If we do not find a way to meaningfully engage the culture, we are giving our, ourselves a pass and saying, this culture isn't worth bothering with, and in the end, we abandon the people that God has called us to be missionaries to. I'd ask you to pray what it means for you to be a missionary in your culture today. Really engage that question with God and ask how he wants you to be a missionary in this time and place. Take the challenge and see where God leads you. Thank you.